The end of the world is tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow. See, there's only one thing to do when the world is falling apart. Listen to Basil and Gonz as they discuss this week's news and events through the lens of Bible prophecy. You are listening to Canary Prime News Tour. You are listening to Canary Cry News Talk. It is May 19th, 2023, episode number... 625 Bilderberg Dragons. Quite literally, I think. Almost. By name, at least. My name is Gond, director of the Age of Deceit films. My wife calls me the Cabana Boy, your favorite Asian provocateur for Christ. Live to tape from California to bring you the best news, which is the gospel message of Jesus Christ, while reporting the egregious with a well-rounded, biblically grounded take on world events. And... Once again, we have no Basil here, but we will keep the show moving forward. We'll do what we can. And uh, yeah, you're you're all part of it. You're all here. So thank you for that. Uh, We do have an update from Basil, but before we do, a quick disclaimer. It's time for a disclaimer. Now listen up, YouTube. That's right. And just for all the content moderators and censorship managers out there, be they robots or humans, everything you hear on this show comes directly from the mainstream corporate news media. We do not claim to be experts on healthcare, geopolitics, military strategy, corporate law, or the moral and ethical implications of any of these topics, nor do we implicitly or explicitly support or subscribe to any sources or narratives containing misinformation, disinformation, or malinformation. As to Defined by the Department of Homeland Security. We're good boys. All right, YouTube, we're good, good boys. And before we get to the rundown, quick message from Basil. Hey, everybody, your best buddy Basil here with another appendix update. Yes. Thank you to everybody who continues to pray for me and ask after me and my remaining organs. The rest of my organs are doing well, and they send their warmest regards. Uh, A little update. Man, I am just watching the world happen from my my little hospital bed, and I cannot believe all of the things that I will not be able to comment on when I get back to the show. It'll be so outdated. I am on day 11, day 11 of being in the hospital here. Fun, fun, uh, fun thing, I guess. I got to go, believe it or not, outside yesterday. It was warm, the sun was out. I was overwhelmed by the sights and smells and sounds of the world. I lasted about eight minutes out in that world and then came back inside and took a nap. That was wonderful. Uh, The pain is beginning to subside. However, replacing it are sort of other weird things going on. Uh, For those who are 
medical people. Uh, my white blood cell count started going up again after returning to normal. So that spooked the doctors a little bit. So they decided to keep me. Get this. Longer. Longer than 11 days. There's going to be a check-in tomorrow on Saturday. They gave me this funny little breathing machine where I can practice breathing so I don't get hospital pneumonia, which apparently is a concern now. Uh, yeah, so if you're looking for things to pray about, pray I don't get pneumonia, like some sort of vic skeletal Victorian child. Uh, pray that the leeches work and that the bloodletting uh, is effective. I appreciate that very much. Um, don't know what else to say. There is a good chance. There is a, let me, I'll put it this way. There is a non-insignificant chance that I will still be in here on Monday, which I think will bring the total shows missed to six which I think is a record. So that's what we do, baby, here at Canary Cry. We set records. Uh, we may, because I'm able to spend more time awake, I am not making a promise right now. I am just saying, because I can spend more time awake, perhaps I will have some commentary on world events that I can send in. That is not a promise. I don't even know why I said it out loud to the many people listening to this because it is the way that God made me. Uh, anywho, thank you so much for continuing to produce the show. Gons are doing a great job. Uh, everyone out there, again, remember, I'm reading your messages. They make me feel so happy, even if I cannot respond to them. Uh, hmm... I think that's it. I saw a bird. I saw a bird yesterday, y'all. Have y'all ever seen birds? They're so beautiful. <laughs> okay. All right. This has been your Canary Cry Basil's Appendix update. Make sure to tune in next time. But until then, think outside the appendix. Oh, man. All right. Well, thank you for all the prayers. I know, again, he's seeing all the messages. The worst part about these audio recordings from Basil is you can hear sort of the hospital drone, the, the, the white noise, the background noise of the sort of desperate, sad, but also sanitized kind of <laughs> background noise of a hospital. You know, that that's the part that really gets me. And you can tell he's been in there for a while and he sees birds and it's like a, a religious experience. So I think that's what, that's, that's, that's where they get you. That's where they, that's where the mind control comes in. But anyway, good to hear from Basil. Good to hear he's getting better. And, uh, actually just as a side note, we may not have a show Monday. Oh, well, I don't know about that yet. We'll see. We'll find out. So let's move on. We're going to do uh, a quick rundown for Basil. Oh, look, here's Basil. Let me bring you up to speed. All right, we're going to kick things off, of course, with the Bilderberg meeting and specifically the transnational threats. Kind of went down a rabbit trail with that one and found something a little interesting. There's uh, some, some connections to dragons. So we'll do that. That'll be fun. And then we have a flippy update where uh, it's kind of a series of flippy updates, but one specific flippy update that is an actual flippy update. Miso Robotics as a, a new investor, one of the biggest companies out there, Ecolab. We'll talk about that. And then depression. One in six adults have depression in the U.S. Record levels on the rise. Sounds about right. Sounds about where the design of uh, society was supposed to be in this era. But of course, in the context of sad people, we have to make superhumans. 
And so, yes, uh, the Washington Times bringing a story about building a superhuman. Focus on mind, body, soul drives evolution of America's war fighters. Good. Yay. Hey, we're all depressed. Why not just enhance ourselves? Uh, and then a little kind of side note on some brain computer interface updates. Uh, the, the field is being set. The different companies uh, coming out now and getting the support financially and from places like the FDA uh, to move forward with human testing and some interesting numbers surrounding that. So we'll touch on that. And then our DNA can be tracked now. Uh, it can be pulled from air. Privacy experts are worried. Eh, good. They mo monitor our brains and then monitor our DNA. Uh, and then we'll talk about quantum computers. China. Always good to bring up China, what they're up to. And then at the very end, you will never guess who the crypto bros are <laughs> in, in our U.S. intelligence. All right. Here we go. We're going to kick things off with... What is this? Oh, yeah, the first story. Build back better. Build, build, build back, back better. better. Blah, blah, blah. Build back better. We will build Babylon better. This time, a new world order. The Bilderberg Group is meeting their annual meeting, which is so secret and so consequential, yet, uh, you know, it's not so secret anymore. Most people know about meetings like this. This is the 69th Bilderberg meeting. It's a special one. Sure, this is when things change. It's the most memeable Bilderberg meeting. Uh, they have a press release here right from BilderbergMeetings.org. And it says the 69th Bilderberg meeting will take place from 18th to, through 21 May. That's today through, oh, yesterday, yesterday through Monday. In Lisbon, Portugal, about 130 participants from 23 countries have confirmed their attendance. As ever, a diverse group of political leaders and experts from industry, finance, academia, labor, and the media have been invited. And they have a list here of participants. We, I know people like to spend time looking at it, and, and there is value in that, but that's not what we'll do here. Uh, it says here that about two-thirds of the participants come from Europe and the rest from North America, approximately a quarter from politics and government, and the rest from other fields. So, obviously, heavily influenced in the uh, politics, government sector of North America and Europe. Uh, again, you know, they try to say, oh, it's so diverse, but really it is it is the uh, tip of the spear of Western, I guess, institutions. And it says here, thanks to the private nature of the meeting, the participants take part as individuals rather than in any official capacity. So they're they're able to take off their their hat of as uh, you know uh, people who actually run their governments. They can just be themselves. They're participating as individuals, not representing those institutions or organizations, and hence are not bound by the conventions of their office or by pre-agreed positions. As such, they can take time to listen, reflect, and gather insights. <laughs> Ah, yes, uh, I don't I, I can take off my uh, my robe as the the leader of this nation and I just be me, drink some some fine wine and learn, gather insights. Cuz clearly, you know, it's funny because does that mean that they're pretty much admitting that in in any kind of setting outside of Bilderberg, these people are just complete shills for their institutions and organizations, right? I mean, that's pretty clear. Uh, so the difference here, of course, the key topics being discussed, you have AI, of course, banking system, China, energy transition, Europe, fiscal changes, India, industrial policy and trade, NATO, Russia, transnational threats, Ukraine, U.S. leadership. I mean, sure, it's starting to sound like a, a news talk episode here of topics, but um, the one that really... Uh, got my attention it may be because we have touched on all these other other topics so much on the show over the many years we've been covering all kinds of stuff uh transnational threats was one that interested me so i looked it up and i found a website called csis.org that's the center for strategic and international studies and they have the transnational threats project tnt 
It's the, the best acronym, which is a project that focuses on the threat and evolution of terrorist networks and the irregular activities of countries like Russia, Iran, and China. Oh, okay. Kind of broad, a little broad. Led by Dr. Seth G. Jones, director and Harold Brown chair, TNT examines the activities of organizations like the Islamic State, Al-Qaeda, uh, Lebanese Hezbollah, Shia militias, and far-right and far-left extremist networks. I mean, whoa, okay, so you got the Islamic State, you got Al-Qaeda. You know, while all that was happening in the, I, I guess it really kicked into high gear after 9-11 in the early 2000s, that first decade into the 21st century, we had all the, the, the terrorist stuff. That was the big threat in, in mainstream. It was the Islamic State. It was Al-Qaeda, Hezbollah, the Shia. The, the whole thing was a problem. They're the threat. You know, we have to give up our privacy and all that kind of stuff to protect ourselves from, from those extremist terrorists. And there was always that sense that this is setting up for something else, right? This, this is setting up for something more closer to home, at least in the U.S., and Clearly, that's what it's become in the last 10 years uh, between the 2010s and 2020s, which is basically this far right and far left extremist networks, which is so broad. It's such a sweeping generalization that it's it's hard to nail down what that means. It's like, uh, OK, uh, can we label CSIS as an extremist organization or are you guys uh, you guys are so highbrow you know you're in your ivory towers over there so you don't include yourselves in any of these terrorist groups uh but also they include counterterrorism efforts so maybe they include themselves on that list but i don't know man they're they're higher than people so you know maybe not tnt also analyzes russian iranian and chinese irregular warfare activities very interesting such as covert action economic warfare Support to non-state partners, cyber operations, disinformation, political warfare, and espionage. Uh, it sounds to me like they're just tracking for, you know, U.S. intelligence, how good their job is. It's like a metric system. <laughs> it's like the dashboard for the intelligence. Like, hey, how good are we really doing with our operations around the world? Well, you know, there's no way to officially do it because then you'll give it away that it's all kind of staged and planned and all that kind of stuff so uh we'll just have this organization over here do some of the research for us and you know become our metrics basically uh so anyway i just thought it was an interesting project uh, in partnership with csis's andreas c dracopolis ideas lab and ideas is spelled lowercase i capital d lowercase e-a-s lab tnt translates its research into high quality videos podcasts, reports visualizations and other products designed to engage audiences and inform policy discussions through objective analysis tnt's work is highly valued by government officials corporate executives and other influential leaders seeking to understand prevent and counter transnational threats so now we have this tra transnational you know it's funny it's almost like they're Allowing for the transhumans to have their own digital space. You know, it's a transnational threat with transhumans. I don't know. That's just kind of a side thing. But all right, moving on about CSIS, same website. And yeah, so we'll get back to this guy here, uh, Andreas C. Dracopoulos, in just a moment. I did want to mention on this about page, they admit here, CSIS's purpose is to define the future of national security. That's what this organization is here to do. And they're the ones doing the transnational threat analysis, which is being presented at the Bilderberg Group as one of the talking points. So, you know, I'm sure it'll kind of go unnoticed by many, but it's, it's one of those topics where, I don't know, it, it's pretty... In your face, I would say. It says here, we're guided by a distinct set of values, nonpartisanship, independent thoughts, innovative thinking, cross-disciplinary scholarship, int uh, integrity and professionalism, and talent development. CSIS's values work in concert toward the goal of making real-world impact. 
Uh, CSI scholars bring their policy expertise, judgment, robust, robust networks to their research analysis and recommendations, yada, yada, yada. Okay, so they're the think tank behind the governments and institutions. Uh, 1985, CSIS panel led to the Goldwater-Nichols legislation to reform the Defense Department and Joint Chiefs of Staff. So, again, just a real a badge of honor for them. They they changed policy based on their research here. This institution, by the way, is 100 years old, I believe. Uh, an independent, not-for-profit organization. Oh, since 1987. I'm sorry. What am I thinking about that's 100 years old? I'm way off. Way off on that. Uh, I was thinking of something else. I was looking at something earlier. that. Oh, Ecolab. Ecolab is 100 years old. We'll get to that. It's a flippy update. Okay, so yeah, 1987. Uh, marked its first half century of existence by moving into a new state of the art headquarters in downtown Washington, D.C. in 2013. Yay, a new surveillance building, Ivory Tower. CSIS is well positioned for another 50 years of providing strategic insights and policy solutions to the world's decision makers. It's like the lizard people analytics firm. Um, and then they mention their, they touch on briefly on their about page their involvement in Ukraine with this transnational threats thing. They say in 2020, the CSIS transnational threats project constructed a data set of domestic terrorist plots and attacks, which shifted the debate within the executive branch, Congress and the U S public about the Homeland threat from extremists. So they're the ones that are creating the profiling of who the extremists are in this country. At least that's what it sounds like to me. They sound like the think tank, the ones collecting the data, presenting the information to world leaders and governments and people in the U S people in Congress that, Hey, yeah, the biggest, this is where maybe Biden gets his line, you know, or it's the greatest threat to America, whatever he said the other day, that's probably where this comes from. In 2022, CSIS researchers were at the forefront of forecasting a Russian invasion of Ukraine, the largest land war in Europe since World War II, using satellite imagery analysis of the Russian buildup and maps of possible Russian invasion routes. So they're also the ones that have the eye in the sky, and they're able to... So this is a government operation, clearly. Uh, they, they say they're private and all this kind of stuff, but, you know, this is how it works. This is how the... the engine runs so to speak okay so this whole operation would not be possible without the partnership of andreas c jacopoulos and his ideas lab so who is andreas c jacopoulos well according to bloomberg andreas c jacopoulos vice chairman rockefeller university all right, there's a check right there. Makes sense. If you go to littlesis.org, it's a website that kind of gives you data on, uh, or alleged data on, uh, you know, political contributions that people have made. It, there's a page here for Andreas C. Dracopoulos, and um, you can see here that he has uh, given to different things, you know, the Rockef well, he's a trustee for Rockefeller University, which makes sense. Uh, also, the trustee, he's listed here as a trustee for CSIS, which is what we were just looking at. Uh, but also, he gave a contribution of $1,000 to George W. Bush back in 2004, uh, supported Mitt Romney with a $2,500 gift back in 2011, and also $1,000 to the Republican National Committee back in 07. So, seems like he leans right. Yeah, interesting. At least it's sort of a <laughs> neocon type of fella. Uh um, but you know, one thing that's very interesting about his name, and this is one of those rabbit trail things that, you know, may or may not have true significance, but I'd like to point it out anyway. I'll allow you listening to either make the connection or not, but according to some, I say the internet, but you know, just people out there reporting and making things uh, available, information available, Dracopolis can be loosely translated into a dragon's reproductive parts, or it's a commonly found Greek surname that actually means dragon's son. His name means dragon's son. Okay. Uh, can someone verify that? Somebody in the chat has to be able to let me know if that's 
correct or not. Um, but yeah, here's a guy. I think he's like a Greek guy. I mean, yeah, the name says it, but he uh, appears to be wealthy and, you know, has partnered with large government programs that, uh, or private programs that are doing things for the government and or at least international governance in this case with the Bilderberg Group. Uh, but there you go. This is <laughs> just a just a strange little connection there with uh, a name and the activities of an organization that nobody voted for that do things, you know, pull the strings, so to speak. So the other thing here, of course, AI being the big news item at Bilderberg, this is Fox big names in AI to convene at secretive Bilderberg meeting. You know, Fox News really still trying to lean into that kind of truth or voice, but we know it's a, it's a just it's a crock over there. Uh, it says here several executives from top, uh, top, I'm sorry, several executives from tech companies involved in the AI arms race will be in attendance, according to Bilderberg, including Open AI CEO Sam Altman, Microsoft CEO Satya Nadella, Google DeepMind chief Demis Hassabis. And former Google CEO Eric Schmidt, Eric Schmidt, Mr. Alphabet himself, Mr. Uh, Google went to observe him at Burning Man to see how he will integrate with the crowd. This is true about Eric Schmidt. <laughs> so, all right, great, great set of people. But, you know, Sam Altman, it's I wonder if it was the exact same people here who were part of of the uh, Senate uh, testifying before Senate committee, which happened this this week, I think, Sam Altman. Uh, so, yeah, he's busy. He gets $100 million for WorldCoin, his crypto project. He already has ChatGPT leading the AI race. And now, you know, he, he testifies before a Senate committee. And now he's flying over to uh, where, 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 where is Bilderberg this year? Uh, I forget it. Where La- Libsyn, Portugal. To uh, to be a part of the discussions with the Bilderberg Group, well, what's what do they got going for this guy? You know, there was that rumor back in the day, and I, I don't know how true it was. This is just one of those sort of conspiracy rumors you hear, especially you know, ten, twelve, thirteen years ago when you first start getting into conspiracy talk, uh, and you learn about the Bilderberg Group. A narrative you often heard was that people, you know, the presidents are selected at this meeting, and maybe it was true at one point. Maybe not, but uh, it's certainly some kind of kingship goes on here where they're choosing individuals who may uh, are supposed to be the ones leading, maybe in this case, in industry when it comes to AI, where we've already seen how social media technology, you know, Silicon Valley sort of, uh, I don't know, uh, pushed over governments and sort of tsunami governments governments were too slow they moved too slow their policies are outdated and the the way the internet works the way social media became available to the masses there wasn't exact policy there was of course there was the stuff that was passed in the 90s but as things changed you know it, it was troublesome for governments they just couldn't keep up and so that that's why I think we saw a lot of the extremes like, oh, we got to shut it down this way or shut it down that way, whether it be from the right or the left based on their ideologies. But it's it was the same argument. And it was because governments were completely inadequate to handle the technological revolution that took place with the Internet here. And so same thing with AI. It's the same kind of thing. They're saying it's kind of the next wave. And of course, they're it's being primed here. I'm sure it's being trickled out and, you know, it. It truly has been a frog in a kettle approach. You know, I've been talking about AI and the threats to man, not just in a physical sense or, you know, in sort of the grandiose, oh, it's going to destroy humanity, but really spiritually and in the context of biblical prophecy, biblical eschatology, what role does AI play? And, you know, connected, connecting it back to the image of the beast, which really sounds like an AI or some kind of image, a, a created thing, an image that uh created by man specifically that gets breath or appears to get breath i mean that's what we're talking about with artificial general intelligence not generative ai that's different i know it gets confusing gai generative artificial intelligence 
that's you know what we're seeing now with the generative art and chat gpt to some regard but then you have artificial general intelligence which is sort of the state allegedly where these ai are going to be a little more self-aware who knows that's the narrative anyway but yeah uh, choosing people to lead in that industry very much part of the game here so sam altman uh, we better keep an eye on him and by the way you know microsoft is being included in this whole um chat gpt thing that of course with microsoft being integrating it and everything else um but i want to mention that uh not just Microsoft, but Microsoft teaming up with Goldman Sachs, CBOE, which is the Chicago Board Options Exchange, and others team up to launch Blockchain Network. Oh, yeah. yay! Goldman Sachs, Microsoft, Chicago Board Options Exchange, Blockchain. Who's gonna? Who's stoked about that? Who's going to use it? I don't know, probably just some lizard people. Uh, so, yeah, there. this is the group of companies who are com coming together to create their own blockchain system. <laughs> a group of firms, including Goldman Sachs Group, Inc., Microsoft Core, Deloitte, and CBO aimed at linking dis uh, disparate institutional applications, potentially encouraging broader adoption of distributed ledger technology and financial markets. <sighs> Yay. They're they're doing it. I thought they I thought crypto blockchain all that was just nonsense. No, they just didn't want to use the open and, and free versions of it. They wanted to make their own. And they're calling it Canton Network. Canton Network. And uh, of course, Canton, a small territorial division of a country such as one of the states of the Swiss Confederation. So, uh, you know, they're kind of saying like, "Hey, this is our Hey guys, this is our own it's our own Swiss bank we're making. It's our it's our own Swiss blockchain. He <laughs> he. Uh, so I, this is the reason why I bring up crypto is because of the fact that that part of the the Bilderberg Group here in AI and the conversation is being led by Sam Altman, who of course Sam Altman, uh, again you know ChatGPT, but also Worldcoin, the company that wants to have oracles these orbs where you scan your eyeball to prove you're human and you can access things, you know? So uh, the fact that there, there is a mainstream vehicle right now, we are seeing big money move or starting to move. It's not big, big money yet, but hundred million, it's a good amount of money to create and build the crypto end of the chat GPT system that, that they've already rolled out shows that they're really preparing for a commercial version of all this stuff and a highly centralized, highly blatantly <laughs> central bank, old school system, federal reserve, corrupt system, that whole thing. You, you can name them whatever you want, the deep state, the, the deep underground, the military industrial complex, the whole, the whole deal. And to have their own, blockchain crypto apparatus so yay fun uh if you think about it chat gpt had 100 million users just like that and you roll out this crypto and you're gonna have at least i don't know even if it's less than one percent you're still talking hundreds of thousands of people who are gonna be stoked about the the iris scan to get some world coin Hey, how much world coin you got? Check it out. World coin, baby. All right. So there you go. Uh, Goldman Sachs and Microsoft, CBOE, coming together. And uh, the AI race, this arms race that they're talking about, it really is fascinating because, you know, in the context of the Ten Kings in the book of Revelation, as well as the book of Daniel, and I know there are different interpretations throughout time and history when it, you know what that means and what it all is and i'm not saying ai has you know a direct sort of uh, application or or a use in this 10 kings world but if you think about kind of the the way different companies are creating their ai a ai is sort of the pinnacle of corporatism in a sense because in corporations you know you're they're already entities they're they're sort of like 
non-existent existent entities, right? Like in the court of law, you can sue a corporation. Uh, the individuals operating it sometimes are protected, you know, depending on how it's structured. And you call the corporation an entity, you know, that can be sued. And it's and then you start talking about DAOs, which I know hasn't hit like mainstream yet, but it will eventually. It will, darn it. <laughs> eventually, everyone's going to be talking about DAOs, which, by the way, maybe it'll ha it'll happen uh, in the context of the debt ceiling. Because I know it's another side note, sorry, another side rabbit trail. We're about to hit the debt ceiling. I know Biden wants to figure it out just as a timestamp here. What's likely to happen is they raise it at the last second and yay, hey, we got a few more trillion dollars of room. But the possibility here, given the current state of the economy and the dying dollar and the, all, all kinds of stuff, it could be by design. Allow the U.S. to default. You know, shut down government. Because, and again, by design. It allows for a moment. It's sort of a, a non-crisis crisis. It really would be a psychological crisis. I get that certain financial things may stop moving. You know, the, obviously there are problems that would happen, like real life problems that would go down if the government completely shut down and they'd, we hit our debt, debt limit. And you know, there, there's theories about what would happen. Nobody knows exactly. But, you know, the theory is that they'll shut down withdrawals and you know, it could be a whole financial thing, but also in a perfect sort of uh, setup in, to bring everybody into the world of crypto, this digital world, the next stage of digitization, the quantification of all things through the digitization, the tokenization of the world. You can have this moment where the system, the whole, federal, the whole system that everybody rails about and more people are learning about is the problem just stops it just stops working for a few days for however long you know a week or something like that you know commerce is still going but and people might react differently but it is a crazy crazy large-scale psychological opportunity to bring everybody into a crypto or good timing for fed now july in the middle of july right so a perfect time for people to be forced into crypto in one sense, or the people that don't want to be forced into crypto, they can wait and fed now's there. Hey, fed now. I, I know everything's shut down, but Hey, government's here to save you. Just download the fed now app. Give us your, your address, your, your blood type, your, uh, your genetic information, your, your iris for the world coin. <laughs> And, um, yeah, and then you'll, you'll have access to all your money. So again, it just seems like a perfect opportunity that may or may not be taken by those lizard folk. Uh, but it, just to kind of prove that point about the AI and the 10 Kings going, going back to that, sorry, back to that, back to the whole thing. Uh, the wall street journal, Apple restricts use of chat GPT, joining other companies wary of leaks. Basically these companies that are developing their own AI chatbot, whatever, and, I, and the reason why I went into that side note you know, trail was because with AI, again, a company can become more than just a sort of a entity, a legal entity in thought or on paper. It can become more. It can become an interactive database, its own sort of entity that is that, that has working elements like a person. You know, it's got its own information. It's it's got its own history. It's got people working for it. And so, when you think about kings and kingdoms, you know the network state idea that we're moving into makes a lot of sense with uh, the biblical um, uh, biblical passages that refer to eschatology that have like dual meanings, like the horns or you know or the uh, the diadems, things like that. It's kings and kingdoms makes sense. So anyway, that's all I'm saying. All right. So, uh, yeah, there you go. Bilderberg. We'll, we'll probably see the effects of what is discussed here in short order, maybe a couple years, something like that. I'm sure, uh, uh, the, the outcomes of 
Taiwan are going to be discussed in the context of China, uh, energy transition, fiscal changes. Uh, of course, India being a big part of this, NATO, Russia, Ukraine, U.S. <laughs> I love how it's, it's uh, again, going back to the list here on the Bilderberg website. You know, it's all listed AI, banking, and, you know, the nations are listed by name. You know, China, Europe, India. Of course, you got NATO, but then you got Russia, Ukraine. But then it's U.S. leadership. <laughs> I don't know. It's just kind of funny because it's a very subtle yet kind of revealing sentiment about where the <laughs> kind of the popularity of American leadership is right now. Not good. Not good. It's a talking point at the Bilderberg meeting. Uh, so anyway, there you go. That is it for the Bilderberg stuff. Again, we'll keep track of it and we'll learn more. We'll uh, report more as things pop up. But uh, yeah, let's move on on this Friday. It's Friday. Day, 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 day. Keep playing with the Friday thing. Don't learn today. It's Friday. You ain't got no job. And you ain't got Friday. 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 Uh, 33 watching. Hey, there it is. Maybe they capped it. They're like, nope, no more than 33 people may watch on Rumble. The new green revolution. You know, I, I, I have pointed that out. You know, it's kind of weird how everything uh, is green. Like the new stuff is green. You know, you got Gab, which is a green color. You got Rumble, which is green. Um... What else? There's, there were other things that were green that I, that I was noticing. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Friday. Uh, another weekend coming up of moving stuff. Looking forward to that. We're in the last few days of being in the old place. And then it'll be about a two-week window to figure out a way to transition this office into the new house, into the new office. And, yeah, looking forward to doing all that. It's a lot of work. And... But, uh, yeah, it wouldn't have been possible without the producers. And uh, I know that it's been <laughs> a little bit rough, maybe, for people used to having the back and forth with me and Basil. It, it, it does. It's starting to weigh a little bit on my mind where it's like, man, I. Uh, for one or two episodes, it's kind of not good, I would say. It's just OK. I, I'm. I'm able to go and say, all right, yeah, I can, I can handle doing the episode, but now we're going on a few here. Like, you know, we're going on a, it's starting to string together three, four episodes. That's what I'm starting to feel a little bit like, all right, all right, buddy. Yeah. Come back, man. I, I can't, I can't like ramble so long. I'm, I'm going to say something that's going to get all of us in trouble. <laughs> so I just don't want to, don't want to keep talking. I'd rather go back to pushing buttons, but, um, it did make me think about, how we operate here, the value for value system. And, uh, you know, it really is unique here. We have no corporate influence. We have no communist influence. We have no cartel influence. You know, we're just the canary in the coal mine here pointing to the way, the truth and the life. And here's how this whole value for value thing works. We create content. If you get any value out of it, you simply provide value back with whatever capacity you can, whether it be with your time, your talent, or your treasure. And, you know, this is a system where we do it because we want to stay clean and clear from being co-opted by those creepy corporate communist cartel types. See what I did there with the alliteration, all those C's. Um, but it's really the only way to do a podcast where the central message is pointing at Jesus Christ, you know, the only begotten son. It just feels weird when you're, when that's the point of the show and you're just kind of like, Hey, Jesus. And also this product, you know? So, uh, that, that, that's why we do it to, to stay true to that message. And it doesn't mean there aren't challenges that come with that. Obviously it's uh, it's easier to do ads and, you know, it's sort of the, accepted model when it comes to podcasting to just have ads it's just part of the way you got you got to make money somehow 
and uh, we just rejected that model and decided to go a tougher route, which is kind of, I've, I've sort of been that way my whole life. I, I reject the status quo or the, the way it's supposed to be, and I, and I forge forward, and usually that's the harder way. But, you know, as we've learned, as Basil and I have learned, it's sort of the more rewarding way because you're staying honest to who you are and what your message is. And, uh, yeah, there, there have been opportunities to be compromised, uh, many times, you know? And so, um, it's just not a good feeling. It's a, it's a horrible feeling when you're like, okay, you accept this thing. And all of a sudden you see, you know, people that have been paying attention to not paying attention, but just people that support you suddenly get their attention drawn into something that you don't feel like is, you know, that, that, that they need, you know? So in any case, um, that's what it is. It really, with podcasting, when you do advertisements, the podcasters are selling your attention to third parties, advertisers, whoever they meet, who, whoever they might be, with products that are placed in front of you. And uh, with value for value, instead of the products, we just present the people because that's how the show operates with you, the listener, the viewer, who decide to provide value back. And we call those people producers because by definition that's what they are if they provide value back you look up the definition of a producer in the context of you know creating content it's uh, defined as such people responsible for the financial and managerial aspects of the making of a film or broadcast or for staging a play opera or even a podcast i added the last part it doesn't say podcast in the definition but it's the same thing it's the same idea um, so it's really been a, a true blessing here uh, for us to operate this way. And it wouldn't have been possible without you who have uh, stepped up and provided the production, whether it be the production cost or uh, through your time and talent. So again, very grateful, honored to work in this capacity for everyone delivering the content that delivers Christ. And uh, thank you for sticking with us, especially through the, uh, the good, but also through the bad. And uh, for those of you who've been with us for a long time, there's been plenty of ugly. So we're very grateful and thankful that you're still here if you've been here for a while. And if it's your first time, welcome. We're here. We're always hanging out. We're a weird bunch. But, uh, you know, we love the Lord. And uh, we like to keep up with what's going on without taking it too seriously, in a sense, because we know it's meant to, you know, mess with your head. And that's kind of the whole point. It's like you want to stay up to date with what's happening. But you don't want it to affect you spiritually in a sense where it's like you you feel like you have to mobilize and you must do something, you know, because uh, that's kind of the point sometimes with a lot of this information and, and or not the information, but at least the propaganda that we try to deconstruct here is they want you to mobilize to do something. What's the call to action of these institutions and organizations and media companies that are getting you this info? You know, usually it's a it's a dollar sign. Uh, or maybe a yuan sign at the end of the road for them, but that's not it for us. So with that being said, we want to thank our executive producers. Executive producers. Yeah. So we appreciate all the producers of the show, but right now we're going to thank the folks who come in with a hundred dollars or more to support today's episode and, uh, yeah, we're going to thank you. We're going to sprinkle you with jingles and, and the whole deal. So we have one executive producer today, and that is Maureen M. Oh, where's my, where's my chime, my chimes? Here we go. Maureen M. There she is. Thank you very much, Maureen M. She came in with a note here. God bless you guys. This world is smacking you around with immense challenges. Yes, uh, Basil taking the brunt of that. I'm kind of sitting back here pushing buttons, but uh, keep up the good work for the Lord. Prayers for a smooth move for you, Gons. Thank you. And Basil, get well. Much Christian love, Maureen. Thank you so much, Maureen. Appreciate it and appreciate your executive producership. And uh, yeah, executive producer for episode 625, Maureen M. Where'd you find this? So make sure to thank her for this episode. Uh, you know, I'm going to I'm gonna do something real quick here. I apologize. Doing it on the fly. I know, not great, but uh, 
just checking something real quick and then seeing what I should do uh, as my my action, my next action. And we'll get to the flippy in just a moment here. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. All right. Well, um, I'm going to pull an audible here, which I know normally would not happen. I'm going to go ahead and do it because of the numbers. We're going to go ahead and thank the rest of the producers who came in with their treasure right now. Um, it's a short list, and uh, we'll just get it done because we appreciate you. Uh, first up, we have Jack Out of Box. Thank you, Jack Out of Box. He came in with 33.33. Illuminatus! Not dollars, folks. Not dollars. Uh, what do you think he came in? 33.33. What, what, what would he come in? Maybe some ounces of gold? No. No. Is it crypto? It's certainly crypto. Yes. Crypto. Where's my crypto? Is this a crypto? Crypto? Do I look like I know what a crypto is? Yeah, Jack out of the box came in with 33.33 Matic tokens or Polygon, formerly Matic, now Polygon. We discussed them an uh, episode or two ago. They're the layer two Ethereum scaling solution. You know, we minted our first NFTs on there. And uh, the, yeah, so anyway, thank you for that, Jack out of box. Appreciate the, the Polygon. Next up, we have Sir Morv, Knight of the Burning Chariots, coming in 11 11. 231 episodes in a row. Oh, 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 oh yeah! Streak delicious! Thank you very much, Sir Morv. And then we have Morgan E. Morgan E coming in. Thank you very much. Morgan E is also on a streak. Let me see what number of streak Morgan E is on. 30! 30 streak! 30 streak! Streak! Thank you, Morgan E. Coming in with $20.53. Thank you, Morgan E. All right. That's uh, that's it. That's, <laughs> that's it for people over $7.77. We're grateful for you. Thank you very much. There are people coming in under $7.77. We got Sir Casey the Shield Knight coming in. 299 episodes in a row. Next episode will be 300. That is crazy. Dame Gale, Canary Whisperer, and Lady of X's and O's, 261 episodes in a row. Thank you very much. Veronica D, also coming in 261 episodes in a row. Sir Scott, Knight of Truth, coming in 285 episodes in a row. And that's it for right now. If uh, there are some other streakers that might come in later, and uh, yeah, we'll, we'll keep it. We'll keep it loose around here. So thank you very much to all of you. Oh, 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 oh yeah, streak delicious. Women rule. And uh, please, if you want to support the show, go to canarycry.support, learn more, and we thank you for your patronage. Canarycry.support! Get up and take my money! Thank you for your patronage. Thank you for your patronage. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for your patronage. Sleepy update. Do you want fries with that? Come on, Rumble Chat. There's only like one chat in there. People need to talk more in Rumble. All right, we're going to do a quick Flippy update. Flippy is our colloquial name for the disembodied robot arms that are taking our jobs, enslaving our children, and flirting with our spouses. We use talking about Flippy as a way to explore the fun and exciting ways robots are taking over the world and how there's nothing we can do about it. Today's Flippy update is a sequence of updates. And the first one, the children are walking around like they're pirates trying to take over the, the ship. The first one comes from thehill.com. Wendy's testing underground robot system for orders. So Wendy's has uh, <laughs> partnered with a company called Pipe Dream. <laughs> uh, well, no longer Pipe Dream, apparently. They got an underground system where, uh, yeah, you order your food. Uh, instant pickup portals are what they're called. They'll be positioned next to parking spots. Patrons will place their order and the technology uses autonomous robots to transplant meals underground to their vehicles. 
Great. Thank you, Pipe Dream. So it's sort of the revolution of robots in food is here. Uh, it, we knew it was going to happen post COVID. As soon as the lockdowns happened, we were like, oh, yeah, this is a great opportunity to you know move the whole food industry into robotics even more because, hey, COVID, you know, so uh, moving on here. This is all leading somewhere, folks. It's still part of this flippy update. Fox News AI powered robo tire can change four tires twice as fast as human. I like how it's the singular human twice as fast as a human. Um, yeah, another another thing that robots are able to do with the help of AI after a vehicle pulls onto the device's platform. This is robo tire. This new technology, artificial intelligence driven machine vision identifies the wheels, spots the lugs and guides the robot arms to unscrew and remove the nuts or lug bolts then pulls the wheels and tires off. And, you know, what I'm picturing is, uh, you know, the pit stop. Is this going to change the pit stop? And will they unveil? Uh, uh, I don't know. It, they're going to have to, maybe somebody will be able to do it once and then they'll, you know, put in rules. But somebody should do that where it will be NASCAR or something. And in the pit stop, the, the all the guys that do the the, the thing, they're not setting up to change the tire. They're just there to set up the robot that changes the tire and they do it faster than people. That's what I would like to see. And then, you know, they'll probably have to change the rules or everybody has to get one or whatever it may be. But there you go. Another example here where a robot arm is being deployed to do tasks and jobs that require or don't require human intervention anymore. But we know that this all started with Flippy, and they have a well-deserved investor who has come in to help them out. And this is from restaurantbusinessonline.com. We frequent this website whenever it comes to... Uh... Hey, guys. Uh-oh, hold on. Okay, are we still live? What's going on? I'm sorry. My son came in and shut stuff down. Okay. Oh. A little bit of a meltdown there. Are we still live? Are we going? 